Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In the previous lecture, we learned that one of the important aspects to establish the magnetic circuit is producing the magnetic field. In this lecture, I will try to give more details about different methods of producing the magnetic field and how the magnetic material contributes to the magnetic field. The first method of producing the magnetic field is by using a permanent magnet. The permanent magnet produces the magnetic field without external excitation current. The permanent magnet has a north pole and south pole. The magnetic field lines of the permanent magnet emerges from the north pole and enters the south pole. In other words, these magnetic field lines are continuous and form a closed loop. Now, if we take a portion of this permanent magnet and zoom it in, we can find that the permanent magnet consists of tiny magnets called dipoles or domains. What's interesting is that these domains or dipoles of the permanent magnet are all arranged in one direction. The second method of producing the magnetic field is by using an electromagnet which is created by passing an electric current through a coil around a non-magnetic material such as air, wood, aluminum, copper, and plastic. The magnetic field lines of this electromagnet emerges from the North Pole and enters the South Pole. In this example, the electromagnet has a coil of four turns. In general, the magnetic field can be represented by four variables. The first variable, donated by phi, is the magnetic field lines, which represent the existence of the magnetic field, also called flux lines. And the unit of the magnetic field lines is Weber. Now, if we take a certain area, A, at the space close to the electromagnet, and we calculate the number of magnetic field lines enters this area, the result will give a new magnetic field variable called magnetic field density, which is donated by a letter B. The magnetic field density is equal to the magnetic field lines over the area A. So the more lines enter this area, the higher the magnetic field density we get. The unit of the magnetic field density is Weber over square meter or Tesla. The magnetic field can also be represented in additional to phi and B by a new variable called Psi, which represents the magnetic field lines that linked to the number of turns of the coil and it is equal to n phi. This magnetic field called magnetic field linkage. The fourth variable is the magnetic field intensity, which is denoted by letter H. The magnetic field intensity is directly related to the exciting current and magnetic field loop length. The magnetic field intensity H can also be called magnetic field strength or magnetic field excitation and its unit is ampere turns over meter. We will learn more about this magnetic field variable in the next lecture. Basically, 
the above mentioned four variables relate to each other and are mathematically different. However, all of them represent the magnetic field. Now, if we take a small part of this non-magnetic material and zoom it in, we can find that these materials have no dipoles or domains. Therefore, this type of material has no contribution to the magnetic field that is produced by the exciting current and the coil. The exciting current magnitude and the coil number of turns are the only factors that contribute to this electromagnet. Now let's move on to the third method. The third method of producing the magnetic field is by using an electromagnet with a magnetic material or ferromagnetic material such as iron, steel, and ferrite. These lines represent the magnetic field lines that is produced by this electromagnet. Now, if we compare this electromagnet with the one of non-magnetic material by taking a certain area A at the space close to the electromagnet and calculate the number of magnetic field lines enter this area, we notice that for the same amount of current and number of turns, the magnetic field lines and therefore the magnetic field density is much higher in case of a electromagnet with magnetic materials. To understand why the electromagnet with magnetic material has high magnetic field density, let's take a small part of this magnetic material before and after exciting the current and zoom it in. We can clearly notice that the magnetic material consists of unarranged or unaligned dipoles or domains when the current is equal to zero. Once the current is applied and reaches a certain level, these domains will be arranged or aligned all in one direction. Once that happens, the magnetic material will contribute to the magnetic field and make it much stronger. When the domain are aligned, we can say the magnetic material is magnetized. Also, it is worth mentioning here that the magnetized magnetic material can also be demagnetized. We will explain this concept later in a different lecture. Furthermore, if the magnetic material is magnetized and demagnetized easily, we call the magnetic material soft iron. Otherwise, we call this magnetic material hard iron. The fourth and last method of producing the magnetic field is by using a current carrying conductor, as shown in figure below. Once the current flow in the conductor, a magnetic field is produced around this conductor. We learned from the above mentioned information that the electromagnet produces a magnetic field. However, we still need to know the direction of this magnetic field. This direction can be identified by using the well-known right-hand rule. To use this rule, we hold the coil with our right hand pointing all fingers in the direction of the current in the coil. The thumb will show the direction of the magnetic field or the north pole of the electromagnet. Let's apply this rule to the following two magnetic circuits that have two different current directions around the magnetic materials. Based on the right hand rule, 
The magnetic field direction of the magnetic circuit in figure A will be in the anti-clockwise direction, while the magnetic field in circuit B will be in the clockwise direction. The right hand rule can also be applied to the current current conductor case. This time, to apply the right hand rule, grab the conductor with your right hand with the thumb pointing the direction of the current through the conductor. The other four fingers will point to the direction of the magnetic field. Up to now, we learned how the magnetic field is produced and how its direction is determined. In the upcoming lectures, I will focus more on some basic equations and relationships related to the magnetic field and magnetic circuit. To summarize, in this lecture, we learn the difference between non-magnetic and magnetic materials, how to produce the magnetic field, how to determine the direction of the magnetic field or the polarity of the electromagnet and carrying carrying conductor using the right hand rule, also introduce the four important variables used to represent the magnetic field. Feel free to leave comments and suggestions. I am Ihsan Al-Nabi and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.